Welcome to Blog to Your Talent. This is Lesson 9, and we are on the topic of advantages of blogging. One of the reasons um, that it's an advantage to blog about your talent is that you can talk directly to your readers. Now, what do I mean about that? Because normally, blogging is, uh, you normally think about it as writing about your, about your talent in a blog. But, as you probably suspect, is that you can embed video inside your blog. In fact, when you do put a lot of video in your blog and you do this on a regular basis, they have the cute name of changing the word blog to vlog, which blog. means like a video blog. But you don't really have to do video all the time. Yeah. What, I, what I want you to think about here is that sometimes when you explain about an aspect that's a little more difficult to uh, interpret on paper, that sometimes when you switch over to video like we're doing right now, is that you can use your uh, tone of voice and your pauses to explain things better okay. and and some some type of things especially if they're more like an intellectual um, point that you're trying to bring across it's sometimes easier to explain it verbally because have, have you ever noticed that you try to give a piece of paper to a friend to explain something complicated and then you decide oh forget it I'll just explain it to you and they understand it that's because you're pausing dramatically at the right points and you're adding a little more information than you would in the text. So you do want to use a video in your blog on those particular topics that might be a little more difficult for the average reader to understand. So don't be afraid of using that. And what would you say your experience has been with video blogs? You've... I personally like when I, I follow a, a lot of blogs and these tend to be uh, mom bloggers and I like to see what ideas they come up with, with recipes. Think of an example of a recipe. You can read a recipe online and maybe it's a complicated one. In fact, a complicated example would be like croissants. Those are really hard to, to make if you were following uh, a recipe. Croissants are those really yummy, Rich, super bigger. flaky French yeah. pastries. Yes. And, and if I were just to read that in a recipe book, I would kind of get it, but there were so many steps involved that I would be better served by watching somebody actually explain it on a YouTube channel. So I would go instead, if I was really into pastry making and then I really want to master that, I would go and watch somebody actually going through the steps and talking me through it because also with a video, the person actually who is producing something might make a mistake as they go along. Whereas if you're writing the blog post out, you might not think of all the little mishaps that could happen. So if they make a mistake as they're going along, they could say, oh, whoops, I should have chilled the butter longer because it's kind of hard to, to roll out, for example. So, so a lot of things in video form are much better than in written form. Yeah, in fact, we have um, a son who's not even 12, he's 9. Mm -hmm. And he loves to learn how to bake and to cook. And he follows um, a very popular whole food uh, subscription service where there's, it's basically like a, like a vlog and no Flint's channel. Mm -hmm. And he, if he reads a recipe, which he does, yeah. he's able to read a recipe and follow it. There's a lot of in-between steps. He doesn't know if he should, how vigorously he should, he should, uh, uh, whip things up. And he's, and he's still new, so maybe the name of the equipment might, like if, for example, if somebody in a recipe blog um, says, you know, writes down to have a Pyrex glass container, and he's, Mom, what's a Pyrex glass container? But if he sees it in use, then he figures it out. So what he tends to do is he will go and um, go to this particular subscription that he has and watch the video of how to do something, how to bake something or cook, and then he will, after that, he'll go back to the written instructions and follow those along. Because obviously, some things are a little bit more difficult with video, where you'd have to sit there and write down, okay, three cups of this, two cups of that. But using that in combination with a written instruction that you get in a blog post is, is just a perfect match. Yeah, so I'm going to want you, I'm not going to ask you to do a vlog yet, or a video of yourself, but I want you to keep that in mind. But the instruction for this lesson, this exercise, is for you to go to YouTube, um, sign up for an account, and again there, talk to your parents if you're not old enough to get one. You can probably um, sign up, on, um, actually go in under their name, and then subscribe to some channels. They're called mm -hmm. channels when basically when there's someone on YouTube who puts up a lot of information on the same topic, they're called channels. Mm -hmm. So if you have a talent 
um, that's say um, related to videography, you probably find two or three people out there who are putting out regularly every week, probably maybe two even or three every day. Thousand yeah, people. two or three thousand jobs. <laughs> so find a good one. Yeah, sign up to two or three of the channels and follow them regularly. So that's going to be your lesson for today. It might take you a little bit of time to get used to to figuring out uh, how to set up the channels in the mm -hmm. sidebar, but it's going to be lots of fun. So. Happy talent journey, and we will see you on the next lesson. Okay, I have Nicholas here, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, vlogging, which is a video blogging, and you're doing a pretty much like a blog post on a video, and then you upload those to YouTube. And so you, what you want to do is subscribe to YouTube channels of um, YouTube content that's related to your field, and then every time there's a new YouTube video uploaded, you get notified, and so you can go and keep learning that way. So um, Nicholas is actually going to tell a little bit about a video that he put up, and um, it got noticed by another um, organization that he follows, and he ended up getting quite a few views and subscribers from that. So mm -hmm. why didn't you tell, first of all, why did you decide to do a video instead of blog about it? Because um, video can be explained more. Okay. Um, what were you trying to explain in your video? Well, I was trying to explain how my Pi, my Pi project works. This is Raspberry Pi. It's related mm -hmm. to coding and computer. Okay. Yeah, so then it's better to see visually rather than um, think of it in your mind. So you set up the camera and you press the record button and then you just kind of talk through mm -hmm. what you did and how you did it. And then, um, uh, then, and then how did other people see that video? Because sometimes it's very often that you could create a video and upload it to your YouTube channel and then it sits there and nobody really sees it. Just because it's up there doesn't mean that everybody in the wor world will start coming to your, your channel and seeing you. So, so how did actually someone come and find it? Well, um, the Raspberry Pi team creators noticed my video. And how did they notice your video? Because they're not looking for... Well, it's probably because I shared it on my Google Plus. Okay. And then they saw it, and then they shared, they posted about it on their blog, and then they also had my video on there. Yeah, so they featured your video in their blog post, right? Mm -hmm. And what happened? What did? How did you suddenly? What happened to your blog and, or I guess it would be your video? Uh, I got a whole bunch more people viewing it and got around 1,000 views in my video. Good. And did you get some subscribers out of it too? Yes, around 30. 30 new subscribers. And so that means that 30 people really want to see what else um, Nicholas is going to come up with and what kind of videos he'll still put out. And not only that, you had a lot of emails of people asking questions and um, even somebody overseas asking about getting a Raspberry Pi or learning how to code for her nephew who um, she wanted to buy a present but wasn't really sure exactly what to get. So you were, you were able to help quite a few people that way, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. So it's a lot of fun and, and getting your stuff up on um, YouTube or for now just following, seeing how, how people explain what they do in the form of video allows you to see what works out best and, and you can even say, well, if they wouldn't have done it outside because there's just so much wind and it's hard to hear, that way the quality of your videos will get better when you get to that point of creating your own videos. So. Thank you, Nicholas, for Welcome. sharing about your... Do you want to say what your YouTube channel is in case anybody wants to find uh, you? My YouTube channel is called Scarab Coder. Okay, Scarab Coder. So you do youtube.com backslash. Um, is actually, it backslash or... Actually, you can't go like that. Thank you. You'd have to search okay. for it on YouTube. You can't just go straight to it? I tried I that. It didn't work. Okay, well, if you can, we'll put it in the notes in the description on this YouTube video so that people can link straight to it. Yep. Okay, thank you. Bye.